Thank you everyone for joining us today. Welcome to Starting Your Business, a webinar by the SBDC. I am Linda Fitzgerald and I'm gonna host this webinar for Joe. Your presenter today is Joe Rodola. I'm gonna start by reading this disclaimer. I realize you all can read it, but I do want to read it out loud. There are times that people are joining us on a telephone and they wouldn't be able to see it, so I want to be sure they hear this. The disclaimer is, the information provided in this webinar and any supplementary materials provided to registrants are intended for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute professional, financial, or legal advice. No registrant should act or fail to act on the basis of any material contained in this webinar without obtaining proper financial, legal, or other professional advice specific to their situation. The Northern California Small Business Development Center and its host, the HSU Sponsored Programs Foundation, specifically disclaims any liability, loss, or risk, personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence, directly or indirectly, of the use and application of any of the information presented in this webinar. So we are not your accountants, and we are not your bookkeepers and we are not your lawyers. So please do seek out professional help for you. And now I would like to introduce you to David Walker so David can talk about Venture Camp. Hi guys. Um, you are a lucky group. My, let, me, let me introduce myself first, real quick. My name is David Walker. I'm the director of the Shasta Cascade Small Business Development Center. And uh, you guys are among the first to learn about Venture Camp. Uh, some of you may have heard of Startup Weekend uh, that we usually have up here in Redding, California. It happens in November. Obviously, we can't do a Startup Weekend this year, uh, at least not the way we were doing it because of the situation. Uh, so what we're doing instead, we've joined with uh, Startup Reading. The SBDC has joined with Startup Reading to do a virtual venture camp. It's a four-week event that will basically take you from an idea uh, to hopefully a minimum viable product. Uh, there will be six finalists chosen to compete for a $2,500 cash prize. And uh, during the event, you'll have one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentorship and advising. Joe, can you flip the next slide? Thanks. Uh, the way it's going to work is uh, during the first week, which will be October 9th, uh, there'll be a pitch off. Anybody can come in uh, if you're going to register. Obviously, at first you come in and you give your uh, problem and solution and you have um, on, on October 9th, and you have a one-minute pitch. Um, of those one-minute pitches on October 9th, there will be six finalists chosen. Those finalists will go through these four-week um, uh, <laughs> things. <laughs> uh, the first week uh, will be uh, working on your problem solution, market research, and customer validation. And on the Friday of that week, which will be October 16th, uh, you'll do a pitch on that. The second week, you'll do financials, performance. The third week, your go-to-market strategy. And then on the final week, you'll do a final pitch, and the uh, winner will be selected by representatives of the Shasta Angels. All through this time, you'll have a uh, mentor from the SBDC uh, to help, uh, help you however you want and in whatever way you want. And there will be uh, specialists, uh, people who are experts in all these areas to help you um, at your fingertips, uh, to help you as you put together your pitch. Uh, Joe, next slide. Thanks. The requirements are these. You have to be a resident of Northern California. You, can, you cannot have received funding outside of friends and family. In other words, no outside investors or, or loans. And you need to be in the idea phase or have been open for a maximum of six months. We want people who are just starting out. And um, one more slide, if I remember right. Okay. This is where you apply. And I'll put this... Uh, email address or uh, this web address in the chat so that you can go there. It's free to apply. We need you to apply before September 30th and you can check out this uh, this web page here. It'll tell you more about it. If you have any questions, 
contact the SBDC. And uh, you'll, you'll have all of that information through this uh, webinar as well. So that's what I got. Uh, so with that, I'll put this address in the chat. And uh, Joe, it's all yours. Thanks, David. Again, congratulations, all you online. You are the first to see, A, this presentation about the Venture Camp. And it's on Facebook. It's floating around everywhere on Facebook. So you go online and put in uh, uh, Startup Reading on the Facebook page, and you'll be able to be kept apprised as what's going on in that, uh, in that particular camp. It's going to be cool. Very excited about this. Okay, Linda, you want me to go ahead and do this one? I'll do it. Sure, this I point. can take this one. And then how about if I'll have you add a little bit at the end? So cool. we are the Shasta Cascade Small Business Development Center. And we service Shasta and Trinity County. So if you are a member of one of those counties, you can get advisory support from a specialist at the SBDC. Joe is one. I am one. There are quite a few of us. We have different areas that we focus on. And we're here to help you with your business. The SBDC is a, small, is a nonprofit organization and we provide confidential, no cost advisory and training services to small businesses. We're funded by the US, small, the U.S. Small Business Administration and Humboldt State University. Did you want to add anything to that, Joe? Uh, and the state of California through something called Go Biz. Want to make sure we add that as well. Oh, great. Thanks. Oh, and there's me. How about that? <laughs> so anyway, that's me, Joe Rodola. I am the lead consultant here at Shasta Cascade uh, SBDC. We are uh, uh, covering, in our particular office, the Shasta and Trinity counties. There are SBDC offices throughout the United States. So if you're listening in an area outside of those two counties, never fear. Uh, all you have to do is go on to... Uh, uh, you can go on to, uh, let's see, what is the, what's our website uh, statewide? It's uh, NorCal SBDC. Go on to NorCalSBDC.org, and you can find an SBDC in Northern California. And you can also go on the national website and, of course, find one on different states. Every state and every county in the, in the United States has an SBDC covering it, Okay. This presentation today is geared toward Shasta and Trinity County. A lot of the things I'm going to allude to have to do with the rules and regulations of the north, uh, way north state of California. So if you're out of state, some of the basic stuff obviously will cover, but you won't go to our office over on this particular street to take care of what you need to get done. Okay? So what have I done in the past? I have a 45 years in the credit field. I was a banker for 25. I was a credit counselor for 12 and a half, 13. I've owned my own business for 10, and I've worked with small businesses through two companies, Superior California Economic Development, or SCED, and the SBDC. So basically, I really love helping businesses and people to find ways to finance everything from a car and a house to, of course, starting a business. One of the cool things about all the SPDCs, especially the ones in California uh, and Northern California is, we have a huge team of consultants in all sorts of areas of expertise to help you out at no charge. Remember, we're all paying for this through our taxes. So you might as well take advantage of it because it's one of the few things, no, it's one of the many things that uh, the government uh, you wonder what they're spending the money on. This is a good one, okay? When I started my business 10 years ago, I wished I knew about this place. I didn't. You know, one of those things you do, I just winged it. So you guys will already have a leg up on me when I started mine, simply by attending the class. You already met David. He's our center director. Emily Christensen, our right arm, as we call it. She's the one who answers the phones when you call in, sets the appointments. Lonnie Lott, one of our marketing specialists, Rebecca, QuickBooks, fantastic QuickBooks trainer and QuickBooks advisor, and you see the rest of the list. Linda, of course, is on board with us today as well. Uh, and uh, so we have a huge team of people. 
Well, let's say you're opening a restaurant. You might not see restaurant on this list. Well, we've got specialists in the Sacramento area for restaurants, HR, Kickstarter, uh, you name it. We probably have an expert in that particular area we could hook you up with. And again, no matter who we refer you to, all the services are no charge. Okay, so introduction to the course, an overview, discovery, that's basically what we're going to do today. This class, again, was produced for Shasta Cascade in the geographic area of Northern California. Obviously, by the end of the course, you'll be able to know whether or not you really want to do this. One of the scariest things we'll ever do in our life is starting a business. It goes along with buying a house and getting married and uh, all the things you do for the first time uh, and hopefully do it once pretty scary thing to do. And now we have to add to it that we're starting businesses during the, the pandemic, right? So that's a little scary as well. We'll try to make you understand or help you understand the steps uh, and make informed decisions and decide what type of business, how you're going to create it, a business plan, basic, the whole bit. All right, we'll start with discovery. Again, we talked about the fact that this thing is scary, isn't it? So we'd like you to assess yourself. I think assessing ourselves first, right? I was forced into this, opening a business. How about that? My Office of Consumer Credit Counseling, which I had worked for for 12 and a half years, they came up to my office on a, more, on a Monday morning and said, Joe, thank you for all your help and your service. We're closing down all the West Coast offices of consumer credit counseling. Uh, here's your severance package. Uh, we'll take all the computers and everything here at home with us and have a nice day. And so I went, oh. So at the age of 55, I had to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. Wasn't uh, able to retire, so obviously I had to think about things to do. Was I going to open up a food service? Was I going to open retail? Went home, talked to my wife, and she said, what do you know? Oh, I know credit. That's what I know. I've been dealing with credit issues for people for, you know, at that time, 35 years, 30, 35 years. So she goes, okay, stick with what you know. So there you go. So self-assessment, always best to stick with what you know. Uh, can you find people that want what you're selling? Uh, do you have a market for it? And do you have enough money to get it off the ground? These are all things of importance. My cursor doesn't want to play ball today. Here we go. So are you a good fit for a business? Are you a worker for someone else where you like a nine to five uh, vacation pay, sick leave, uh, uh, an automatic 401k retirement plan, uh, go home on the weekends, hopefully forget about everything? Uh, uh, well, that's not what opening a business is going to be. It's going to turn into 24-7. You're constantly concerned and dealing with your situation. Uh, there is no clock. Uh, I work Saturdays and Sundays. I get phone calls over the weekend. You'll probably get them too. So it's a whole different mindset than working for someone else. Five core skills. Can you sell it? Can you market it? Can you manage everything behind the scenes? Can you plan and can you adapt? One of the things that SBDC and our little offices throughout the United States in the last six months has been helping businesses adapt. Who would have thought that we could only eat at a restaurant outside? How about that, right? Where are we going to put the tables? Are we going to get a tent? Are we going to be able to, in a hot area, get uh, misters to, uh, to blow cold water on us? Uh, are we going to... Uh, 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 move into the street. How are we going to get a permit to do that? So adaptability, boy, I'll tell you what, better be ready for anything. Now's the time to go ahead and figure those things out in your mind. So here's the, again, the employee versus self-employed. An employee uh, follows instructions given to you probably by someone else. Normally work a 40 hour week, unless you get overtime. Uh, employer sets the schedule, paid by the hour, fixed salary, and uh, normally you don't invest in the company unless you have a 401k, you might buy stock. Employer decides the instructions, you're going to be the boss. How about that? Sometimes we've always said at home, boy, I kept, one person I could probably work for is me. Hey, not a bad idea. 
work the hours necessary. Yeah, 24 seven. A lot of the customers that I have helped, uh, uh, we have helped, all of us have helped get into business are working all the time. Paid if the company, company makes money. Hey, if you don't sell enough widgets, you don't get to take home any dough. And of course, it becomes your investment, undoubtedly. And again, personal goals come into play. What most matters to you? Family, your talents, your location, income. Do you want it now? Do you want it later? All these goals come into play before you jump off that cliff. All right, so now we start with my, uh, my home run spot. I guess my sweet spot, we might say, huh? So the sweet spot is money makes the go world go round. And let me, let me tell you, especially now with a COVID scenario, and it wasn't easy before COVID hit, okay? I can tell you that. I've been in the lending field, like I said, for 45 years. I've seen sections where you can get money easily. 2005 and 2006 come to mind. 1984, very difficult to borrow money because the interest rates were 18%. We had massive inflation. The interest rates were so high, nobody could borrow money. And if you did, it was variable rate, no fixed. So all these things fluctuate around and make it difficult at times to borrow money. So COVID has created a lot of issues for startup capital. Okay, So let's face it, the best person to start your business and, and finance it, unfortunately, is going to be you. Don't forget friends and families, your savings account, break the piggy bank on the dresser. Uh, what a sell you, you know, well, I was doing debt reduction for my household. My wife and I've been married 40 years. You wonder why the islands in the background behind me, we're supposed to be in Maui next Friday. A week from tomorrow, guess where we're not going? <laughs> Maui. Why? 14 day quarantine. You fly in to Maui, and you got to stay locked up for two weeks. Well, guess what? Vacation's only 10 days. I lose. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of the reason you got this in the background. So, again, family, you, whatever you can do to get the funds available for you to be able to prepare, the better it's going to be. Minimally, you're going to need 20 to 25, 30% of the total cost of your startup minimally to get going. So if it's going to cost you 100 grand to open your business, you're going to need 25, 30,000 bucks. Okay. Again, minimally. Hopefully you have some assets, a house, maybe a, a, a car, a boat, something you own outright as collateral uh, uh, that you can use. Uh, a lot of people will start their businesses and not quit their day job. Another good way to get started, depending on, it, on what it is. And a service business is the least expensive business to start. Why? Most of us that have service businesses, and I think I can attest to Linda and myself on the calls currently, we operate our businesses out of our home. I use my cell phone, right? I have a laptop at the house. I got internet, you know. Uh, I've got contacts and communications within the community. Overhead's all already there, right? I got to pay the rent to stay in the house anyway. So that's the least expensive business to start is a service business. And don't forget, you know, Uncle Bob, Aunt Millie, uh, all the people that, that love and support you uh, in your personal lives, they may be interested and willing to, to put some money forth. I always suggest if you're going to do that, you have a written contract. You don't want to end up not talking to your uncle for the rest of your life, right? Something goes haywire. And we can talk about how to do that as well right here. We can help you with all those steps. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer normally doesn't happen, at least around here. For instance, if you have a pizza parlor across town that your buddy owns, and you ought to open a pizza parlor, I doubt that that guy's going to lend you any money or even give you any really uh, beneficial information. But if you have a brother or an aunt and an uncle has got a pizza parlor in Texas, Hey, call them up because they're not going to, you know, be competing with that Texas pizza place. Uh, pizza be cold by the time it got there. So glean information from them. And who knows, maybe they'll uh, let you have some, uh, some money to get started as well. 
Don't forget crowdfunding's available, Kickstarter, GoFundMe, uh, Indiegogo has reminded me of, uh, of another site today. Several ways that you can go online and try to uh, ask uh, excess money. Angel investors, again, those of you in the Shasta County area, a lot of you in the area don't know we have a shark tank. I like to call it a mini shark tank. And what this is, is an angel investment group. It's a group of people that have cash that are willing to invest in businesses, especially ones that can, what they call scale up, like, you know, start small and then hopefully explode in the sales area and lend you money. Angel investment groups do not operate under standard payment options like a bank or financial institution. They'll say, you know, uh, well, we'll, you know, we'll let you slide for six months, then you start paying out of profits. Maybe we take a percentage of the, of the business along the way. It's sort of like the TV show, but you don't have that guy on TV, a bald guy yelling at you, okay? These people are cool. Uh, you do a pitch. You, you ask for them to interview you for the pitch. If they like what they see, they'll invite you to actually pitch in front of a group of them. And then they'll decide yay or nay, or maybe have you come back a second time. And then you pitch again to see if they can give you any funding. Also, uh, venture capitalists might come, uh, come to mind, venture capital. Not a lot of that available right now either. Normally, that's for businesses that have been in business a while. But who knows? You may have a friend, a buddy, who is a uh, uh, or knows a pro ball player, right? And they're making all this money and they want to have places to invest their funds and they like what you're doing, especially if you're doing something in the ecology area, uh, 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 saving the environment, you know, all these, these things that uh, I'm going to call buzz topics, right? Uh, they may say, hey, I want to come on board right now with you, you know, and they may fund you uh, directly peer to peer. I mean, uh, uh, you know, directly to you as a, as a venture capital. Of course, there are loans. Again, very difficult to come by, but that's where I come in. Uh, conventional bank loans are available. Almost all of them will be SBA related, Small Business Administration. In the Shasta County area, we have kind of three, three styles of banks. The big ones, the medium-sized ones, and the small ones, okay? I used to work for a big one, and the reason I left the big one was because they no longer gave, in my opinion, personal direct service. So that's a problem you're going to experience now. So if you go to the B of A, the Wells Fargo's, the Chase, and the Citibanks, very difficult for them at all to make any local decision. It's going to have to be packaged, the, the paperwork here, and they send it off to some guy or girl elsewhere you know, that doesn't know you at all. So that's the drawback, time and the fact that they'll probably not know you yay or nay when they approve the loans. Medium-sized banks, we have a few. Uh, U.S. Bank, uh, uh, Mechanics Bank, uh, even uh, 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 Merchants Bank of Commerce is now considered a, a medium-sized bank. The bigger they get, the less personal they can be because again, they have more rules and regulations and they're lending to more people in more areas. So the risk is higher. Okay. So who is the, the, the best, the easiest, let's do that. The easiest banks to get financing from in the greater Shasta County area. You got basically three Cornerstone community bank, golden Valley bank, tri counties bank. Those are the three. Okay. Tri-Counties is getting a little bit bigger. They swallowed North Valley Bank about three, four years ago. So they're getting a little bigger, but they still have some local autonomy. Golden Valley Bank's head office is in Chico. Cornerstone Community Bank's head office is on Hartnell Avenue in Reading. How about that? They do things the way I used to do loans back in the 1970s. You come into me, you fill out an application, I pull your credit report, we talk for a while. I'll tell you, I'll call you in a couple of days. I look at the whole, the whole idea, and then I either give you a check or say, no, we got to do something else, or, gee whiz, I'm sorry, okay? That's the way it was done then. 
Well, they still do it that way. You go in, you apply for the application, they do it in-house, never leaves the building. The only ones that do is SBA. We'll talk about that at the bottom of the purple, uh, purple block there. SBA does have to go to Sacramento. It's the closest SBA office, approval office in California is Sacramento. Luckily, uh, David and I, and most of the people on this uh, call as consultants know them pretty well. Commercial finance companies, we don't really have any in town, but we have contacts and communications with some. Uh, specifically, if you're a, uh, uh, a veteran, uh, superb veteran program for startups. So all you veterans out there, if you're a vet, I'll tell you what, come talk to us. We'll hook you up with the uh, veteran launch group out of Sacramento. Uh, a neat guy down there that uh, can help us out. Uh, with uh, uh, the veteran loan program. And uh, uh, so that's a specialized deal. It's an SBA program, but it's specifically designed for vets. We have a microenterprise loan company in town. Sometimes uh, the banks, the local banks, will actually suggest you go see them. Those of you who live in the Shasta County area may know of a place called Nash Ranch. Nash Ranch is one of the pumpkin patches in town that are gearing up now for the holiday coming up here at uh, Halloween. And they have the corn maze and the pumpkin patch and they have a, uh, the Nash Ranch has a haunted house. It's kind of a neat place, got a little train you can ride through the place. Well, Bob Nash owns that ranch. Got, it's, it's been in the family forever, okay? Well, Bob runs our micro enterprise loan program called Superior California Economic Development. And they'll do loans 10,000 to 50,000. Again, very different than uh, a standard bank loan will be. They have their own funds and they'll lend it with varying interest rates and depend on risk, of course, how good your business plan is and uh, how much money and, and your credit and then how much money you're bringing to the table. Economic development, we do not have at the moment any economic development loans uh, in the Shasta County area. Uh, we do have an EDC, Economic Development Center, uh, but Many areas of uh, California and the United States, they have uh, economic development money available as well. And again, SBA loans, we talked about briefly. There are two types. Uh, it's called the 7A program and the 504. There's a little uh, loan called Express within the 7A program. I think it's for loans under, uh, used to be 25K. I think it's now under 50,000. Uh, but it's a part of the 7A program. 504 is for buying buildings. Easiest way to describe it. 10% down program. If you want to, I'll, we'll talk about great program. Interest rates right now, scary low. Scary. Amazing. Me being around that long, I can tell you, it never been this low in my life. And I've been around a few days. A 7A programs for everything else. Startup money, uh, working capital, uh, uh, salaries, equipment, uh, inventory. So that's what the 7A program's for. And again, you're going to be required to have uh, probably 20 to 30 percent or more of the money that you're going to need from you somehow and uh, some collateral. The other half of the equation on loans is the credit. And one of the best things and the neatest things that I enjoy doing here at the SBDC is helping people build up their credit, okay? Uh, Credit report and credit score, we'll talk about on the next slide, but suffice it to say, if you know what your credit score is and it's above 700, congratulations. That's what you're shooting for. You want a 720, 780, 750, 800, 850 is the top end. I've never seen an 850, but I had a guy I talked to today said he had an 827. That's the kind of people you bow down to and, and, and say, uh, wow, you know. That's, a, that's clean credit. The higher the score, the less the risk, the more possibility you're going to get the money at the best rate and the lowest fees. Obtaining a credit report, we'll talk about on the next slide as well, well, and then I can help walk you through credit correction. Been doing it forever, so be happy to do it. And complete a business plan, which we'll talk about another slide or so down the road as well. All right, so uh, what are the easiest way to get the score? There you go, creditkarma.com with a K. 
Uh, you could probably get your score maybe if you have a credit card company. I think Discover offers free credit scoring uh, through their uh, particular uh, site. Make sure it is free. You don't have to pay a subscription. Credit Karma is totally free. Uh, uh, no cost situation. I set it up for quarter, quarterly review. So anybody that wants to comes out. Uh, uh, and you can go to Credit Karma and set it up how often you want to take a peek at it. This Credit Karma is a, a it's called a, a weighted average. You know, it's 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 not perfect, but I'll tell you what it does do. It shows you up and down trends, and that's what you're looking for. You want it to go up or stay the same if it's 700. You do not want it to go down into the 600s, and you want to know why as soon as possible. Okay. So depending on what your score is. How do you pull your report? It's different than the score. The report makes the score. And the report has the list. There's the three companies, Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, annualcreditreport.com, allow you to pull one or all three of those reports once per calendar year. I always suggest if a person's coming in to me for review that you pull Experian first. It should have the most things on it. It's the oldest, it used to be called TRW back in the 70s. Uh, and now Experian has taken it over. Equifax TransUnion have come on uh, later. In fact, Equifax Fax was started because of the car companies and TransUnion was started because of the real estate loan companies. And Experian was started originally because of credit cards. So a lot of times when you're getting a loan nowadays, they'll pull all three, give you an average score. But suffice it to say that the report makes the score. So it'll show you that you have a Macy's account. A, uh, 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 I was going to say Sears. Not happening. Uh, <laughs> a Penny's account, a Visa card, a MasterCard, Discover card, Chevron, Shell. It'll list each of those cards separately or loans. If you have uh, personal loans and or uh, 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 car loans, uh, student loans. Uh, a lot of times we'll show up on there, should. Uh, so those are the things that we'll look at, and then I'll guide you to go ahead and do those repairs, if necessary. Market assessment. So where did your idea come from? What started it, okay? I had a gentleman start a company, start a company because his friends and relatives loved his salsa, okay? He made a fresh salsa, added it at his pool parties in the backyard. Everybody told this guy, hey, man, you should sell this stuff. It's the greatest. You know what I mean? So he decided to go ahead and, and see what it would take to do that. So he went ahead and got some approvals and some, some, some tubs, uh, you know, closable, uh, lockable tubs. He went ahead and got his labeling all set up with the uh, – with the you know calories and the ingredients and all the legal things you got to have on the on the sticker, he happened to work for a company uh, uh, in the produce department of a store, and uh, asked his boss if in his off time he could go ahead and 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 bring in his first couple of batches of that stuff, open up a couple bags of chips and do a Costco aisle taste test in the store. How about that? So he got a, a logo shirt with one, you know, one shirt with a logo on it, a hat, opened up some chips, brought his stuff out in a nice chest, a table in the middle of the aisle and said, would you like to try my salsa? Okay. It was not organic because the tomatoes he used were not considered organic, but he could say on the tubs that they were free of any, uh, uh, you know, senior moment, the things to keep it fresh. You know what I mean? So no preservatives. There it is. No preservatives. So he could advertise that, right? It was kept in the refrigerated section, so it would eventually die. It only had about a two-week shelf life uh, in the stores. And so, but that's how he started. He sold out his first batch the first afternoon. He said, gee, can I try selling it in the store? Guy, said, you know, boss said yes. There you go. Ended up actually selling that particular salsa in all the Wincos in Northern California, Southern Oregon. So it can happen. It can happen. You just never know. Okay. 
So find out who your customers are. Entering a market, hopefully, that has more demand than supply. Uh, what you're going to do better than everybody else. That's important. Uh, or is there an unmet need in, 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 obviously, the marketplace, something that nobody else does? That's even better. Uh, and, of course, survey potential customers, industry experts, and, and find out what they think as well. Friends, relatives, anybody that's in the, in the field that can help. You and your team. Hey, by the way, you got one extra group of team members on your side as of today. All of us here at SBDC. So guess what? We're here to advise. We got financial management guys like me. We got marketing and sales people like uh, Linda and, and Lonnie and some other people. And we got product and service people as well. So we're all going to be able to assist in that area. But if you're not good at accounting, you may need an accounting person, right? We have great QuickBooks training classes, but if you're not good with numbers, you may need somebody to do that for you or with you, right? I've had wives and husbands do it for the opposite person. I've had moms and dads do it for their kids. It just depends on how lucky you are to have somebody in the numbers game to assist. But you may have to go out and just, you know, find a company to help. How are we doing? Got any questions out there yet? Linda, are we good? Nothing yet, Joe. If you have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat. You can send it to me and I'm happy to read it to Joe. And my name is Linda Fitzgerald. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're gonna make it legal, right? So there's legal structures for businesses and here's kind of the four major types. You got uh, sole proprietorship, many of us, I still am. I've been in my business now for 10 years and I'm still a sole proprietor. That means that if the good Lord, don't do it, the good Lord calls me up today, Joe Rodola's Debt Consulting, which is the name of my business, will cease to exist. Just the way it is. Little one man, one person, sole prop. Okay? I use my social security number on my taxes. I make a Schedule C, which we'll show you in a while. I report my profits to the IRS, and I pay taxes based on those profits. Okay? Sole proprietor. Partnership, more than one person. Right? It could be you and your buddy. You may do 60-40, 50-50, 51-49 percent, whatever it is. You'll have a partnership agreement. The money gets transferred to you individually, and you pay taxes individually that way. LLC and corporation, a little different. The LLC is a limited liability uh, company, and it's, I like to call it a mini corp, mini corporation. It has its own tax ID number. It's its own entity. And the best way to form an LLC is to pay everybody, including yourself, from the LLC. That way you have tracking, okay? Tracking is huge. We uh, can tell you from experience since March of this year that the better you track your profit and loss and payroll, the better you are to be able to get assistance in an emergency. And man, did we see that happen. We had people scrambling to get their books squared away April 1st, you know, because that was how they based the decision on these disaster loans was all based on your financial documents. So LLC, limited liability. Corporations, the last and normal finishing step. That means you're now bigger. You're, you're uh, more intricate, right? You may have one or two different businesses under one, one roof, okay? Uh, uh, so, you know, you may have whatever it might be. You may have a subsidiary here, a subsidiary there, E-I-E-I-O. And the corporation will continue to remain intact. You can pass it on to your heirs. Somebody else can take it over when you pass away. There's all sorts of things you can do with the corporation. Uh, and guess what? Starting at the top is the cheapest to set up, and the corporation is the most expensive. The faster you get, the more dough to spend. And we always suggest in the area of LLC and corporation, at least corporation for sure, that you probably seek legal advice to get that going or have somebody in the family that knows what they're doing to help you set up that corporation, okay? You have licenses that may be needed. Uh, we'll talk about some of the licensing uh, in a second, but you may have federal, California, county, and city. Uh, at the moment, 
uh, there are city, three city licenses necessary in Shasta County. Only three. We have three incorporated cities, Anderson, Redding, and Shasta Lake. And there's little boxes on the little map, the little white lines around the subdivisions and the, and the streets that divide those three cities. So depending upon where your business is located, okay, for instance, my house is located, which is my business in the second bedroom, is located in the city limits of Reading. So I have a Reading business license. And as I mentioned before, Joe Radola's debt consulting. I didn't need to file a fictitious name because I used my surname and the business name. Save me about 150 bucks, okay, as approximately the savings. Because you got to fill out a form and, and, and sign it and give the county some money then you got to put it in the newspaper for 10 days. That's the expense. It's putting it, believe it or not, you put it in the newspaper to tell everybody you're opening up a business. Kind of old school, isn't it? <laughs> I was telling David, we should probably invent a way that we could do this so you don't have to put it in papers anymore. I don't know how you do it. But suffice it to say, it's still done in the newspaper to get the fictitious name. If you use your surname, you don't need it. It saves you time. And we can talk about that when you individually uh, come to us as well. So you only need one license. Technically, I suppose I could sell my product, which I don't, but I could sell my product in San Diego, you know, New York, okay? Because my head office is in Redding, California. Okay, that's good. Uh, but I do credit report reviews mostly for people in Shasta County. That's just that's the way my mine is set up. But you only need one license per se. Let me see where I'm there. Employer ID numbers, again, something to think about. If you have employees, you got to get one. Uh, uh, if you're going to do a sole prop, you could use your Social Security number. A lot of people don't like to do that, but uh, you can, okay? I do still, 10 years after opening, as I mentioned. So uh, it can be done. Uh, LLC, again, and uh, corporation, you have to have a separate ID. Uh, and of course, with employees, you've got all sorts of reporting you got to do. We can talk about employees when you come in. Probably one of the most intricate things that now has to be done is all the taxes and the, the things you deduct from a person's paycheck that has to be electronically downloaded to the right place at the right time. A lot of people that start out uh, with an employee may use a service. There are several services in Chasta County, O2 Staffing, Rush Personnel, a DECO. There's a, a couple of small private little companies that'll do payroll. Uh, some of the uh, CPAs, the uh, 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 accounting companies will do payroll for you as well. And then your taxes, which also uh, might be a good idea. Uh, or you can do it using QuickBooks. Rebecca, our QuickBooks trainer, of course, can walk you through those steps if you wanna do it yourself. Again, you got corporations, companies, Secretary of State gets involved with that. And state income tax used to be called the Franchise Tax Board. Uh, they've changed their name a little bit, but that's involved as well for state income tax. Uh, we have local, we're gonna send you a document in at the end of this in the next day or two uh, to your email address. And the document will have the contact information for each of these areas listed on a two-page front and back uh, list. And that way you'll know where to go to get these things done in Shasta County. Just so you're not going around going, oh, am I going to remember this? You don't have to remember it. We'll send it to you. And again, if you're an employer, you got workman's compensation insurance you got to worry about. you got wage and hour laws. EDD can, of course, assist with that. Uh, you may have occupational safety and health if you're in food service especially. Uh, and you'll have to have, you know, special signage up. If you have staff members coming in, you'll have special signs, a minimum wage signs. Uh, so all sorts of things that you'll need. And we can, of course, talk about that when you come in as well. Seller's permit, very important if you're selling a product. Okay. Uh, I don't know how much longer it's going to last with the state. Uh, going into a major uh, 
uh, uh, major downturn in its income flows, right? So what happens when that happens? They're going to try to figure out ways to raise income, raise money. But right now, as a service business, you don't have to charge tax on your service. Okay? So if I charge $50 for a credit review, I don't have to charge the client seven and a quarter percent on top of that, which is normal standard state tax right now. Okay? So service business, you get away with it for now, like I mentioned. But if you're selling uh, this watch, okay, uh, you're going to have to, uh, they're going to have to pay sales tax. On, on the product and then you got to send it to the right time to the right place okay and again if you're using quickbooks it's got a really cool way you can do it using using quickbooks so you're going to want to meet rebecca i guarantee you that and uh we have a ton of classes this is just one of many this happens to be one of the oldest because i've been teaching this thing live for the last i don't know even as part of it when i before i came here i taught part of this class uh, for the last 10 years, easy, okay? So it's been around a while. But we have webinars coming online because we're using Zoom now like this. We got two or three a week. You could be Zooming your head off. <laughs> yeah. And they're all free, right? So if you want to know about Facebook advertising or how to put your, uh, 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 your uh, uh, website and move it up the Google list, you know, all these things that are kind of uh, – intricate to help you sell your products joe we're doing seminars yes ma'am we have a question can yeah. you it's about business type can yes. you register as one type of one type of business structure and later change it to another um, as your needs change or your business scales wow that's a beauty i didn't even pay that person that's cool uh <laughs> yes you can uh, people have started out as sole proprietors uh, as you as they grow, right? If you're just by yourself, sole proprietor works fine, but now you want to hire an employee. There's benefits to going to LLC from a sole proprietorship when you hire a person or two, right? So then you move up to LLC and change it. And then the LLC goes on a while. Now you're up to 20 employees. You're going, holy moly, I'm making a million dollars gross a year. I got to do something bigger. I got to I got a, the other thing you want to think about is protecting yourself personally. That also is a decision-making factor here. Okay. So if you've got a risky business, I think that was a movie. Anyway, you get you, you have a risky business. You may want to go LLC or, or corporation to protect your personal stuff, your personal belongings, because it shields you a little bit, right? If you're a corporation, but yes, you can move from, so proprietor partnership LLC and up to corporation as needs be. No problem. You can change it. Thank you. And again, we talked about fictitious name and doing business as. Uh, if I had gone JR Debt Consulting, I would have had to file fictitious, right? But since I used Joe Radola Debt Consulting, my last surname in the business didn't have to go through that particular problem. It also saves you time because if you have to go in, file the form, put it in the paper for 10 days, you really can't get your business license officially till you finish that time period. Make sure nobody else is going to complain about your business name after you post it. So what's cool about not going through fictitious is I opened my business in less than a week. From the time that I decided the day after they closed my office, to the day I got my little blue business license paid for through the city of Reading, down on Cypress Avenue in the building behind the fountain, was seven days. How about that? So I was in business within a week. Okay, Joe Adoles did consulting. Got some Vista print cards shipped to me in the mail. Uh, the only thing that held me up is insurance. I'll go ahead and bring it up now. Don't forget it. I get paid uh, for a home buying class program that I teach by the cities and the county, okay? So a government entity pays Joe. So they said to me about three days in, after I started telling them I no longer worked for CCCS and was teaching the class, they said, well, for me to pay you, Joe, you have to have a million dollar liability policy. I don't care about anything else, but I got to have a million bucks policy. 
So I kind of freaked out. So I went to my State Farm agent and said, hey, guys, you do business policies, right? Oh, yeah, we do them all the time. What do you want to do? And I told him, I'm going to be a consultant. I'm going to do all my work off, off my home site. No one's coming to the house. I'm going to use either like drop-in or uh, the library or someone else's place to do all this. I was at United Way for a while using their training room. I was at the city of uh, Shasta Lake. I used their training room. So I'm going to teach them stuff, okay? Teach them how to buy a house since I made real estate loans for 10 years. Yeah. So they said, oh, okay, so I'll call you back tomorrow. So being the good salespeople they are at uh, uh, State Farm, they said, okay, Joe, here's the deal. Give you a million-dollar liability policy on their business in case somebody breaks a leg coming to your class and they want to sue you. And a million-dollar personal umbrella in case you hit a car like a Lamborghini and, uh, you know, you got some problems there. I'll give you a million, million. And I said, uh, what's that going to cost me, right? It's 61 bucks a month. That's all it cost me even today. I've been in business 10 years. It went up from about 55. Now it's up to 61. So depending on the, you know, if, obviously if you're cutting down trees with a chainsaw or you're climbing ladders to clean the uh, gutters of a house or you're mowing lawns even, you're going to have a higher liability insurance policy than I do. Because I, you know, I probably won't cut my arm off, okay? So, so it, it's all best based on risk. But something to think about in your plan is always, what kind of insurance am I going to need? Business license, we talked about the city levels, Shasta Lake, Redding, and Anderson, depending on where your head office sits, will be where you get the license from. Uh, land use and zoning will only be if you have a, 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 a you know, I've had people want to put in little mini farms. Well, you got to check the zoning. Can you do a mini farm in the property you got? So you got to check with the county on that, right? And then food service, lots of county stuff you got to go through. Health and, uh, and human services, uh, you've got all sorts of things there. May need a commercial kitchen. By the way, we have a rentable commercial kitchen here in Reading called Sizzles. So any of you wanting to make stuff and sell it, you do have the capability of renting a commercial kitchen and not have to buy it right off the bat. That's kind of cool. And they're over off of Placer. Uh, so neat spot. It used to be the old Leatherby's ice cream place. Those of you who've been around a while. Uh, that's where she's located. Her name's Karen. And uh, so you can rent a kitchen. Cal Gold. David put me on to this. This is a beauty. Cal Gold is a website calgo.ca.gov, you can put in your county or city into the top little box there in the blue triangle, oh, rectangle. Enter your business type, service, uh, dentist, uh, you know, whatever it might be in the second line, hit search, and it'll give you all the certifications and uh, licenses you may need, okay? You put food truck in there, boom, shakalaka. All right, there's a ton of stuff you got to have, you got to get, it'll give you the list. So then you can bring it in with you when you come in to visit us, or we're going to do, you know, right now we're still doing Zoom, sorry to say. I hope to heavens we're going to do in-persons again, knock on wood, as soon as possible. But we're doing Zooms and phone calls. We can still communicate, and then we'll have that list we can work off of. Lost my cursor again, guys. Hang on a minute. There it is. Boom. Are we cool, Linda? Anything more? No, nothing yet. Okay, from idea to reality, okay, testing the idea. The hope here is you can test your idea, right? Uh, the salsa guy comes to mind, right? He tested it at home first. Had a lot of friends, relatives, whatever, at the pool party saying it was the best thing since sliced bread. You should sell it. Okay. Then he went out to the store, opened up a bag of chips in the aisle. He had a bunch of other people say, hey, this is good stuff. Where can I get it? So he tested the market really good before he got his first product on the shelves. Okay. So there you go. Do they want it? 
right? Do the people want it that you're going to sell to? Are you sure you want to do this? Do you want to sink all that time and all that money and all that sweat into your project? Got to be committed. The ones that have lasted the longest that I have helped put, uh, help get them started are the people that are 24-7 committed to their, uh, their business. It, you, know, you can't take a day off. Really hard. Really hard. I'm going on vacation next week. I was supposed to go to Maui, and now we're going to end up going to my, mother, my mother's house. Great. Anyway, so I'm going to see my mom down in Southern California, but my phone's still on. So I may get calls, requests, set up appointments when I get back. It's going to happen. Okay. And then, you know, feasil the feasibility. Can we do this? You know, can you make and bring whatever it is to market if you're building something? The thing, the place you want to obviously be is right there. Right in that little uh, kind of quasi triangle where it all connects. But uh, we'll talk about that as you come in too as well. So what's the problem? Is there, are you solving needs? Are you doing it better than anybody else? Okay. What will it cost to do this? One of the things we do in the business planning process is a two-year financial cash flow uh, uh, forecast. It's the thing that mostly scares most new business owners is doing the forecast. Well, guess what? I'm a numbers guy. I was a math major in college when dinosaurs roamed the earth. All right. Uh, we had just gotten calculators. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so it's been a while. So numbers, I love them and I'll help you do it. We have a phenomenal Excel spreadsheet we use. In fact, Linda brought up a great idea to have a Excel uh, cash flow analysis class. So guess what one of our new classes is going to be? How to use that forecast and build it. That's in, the, if you build it, in October. In October. If you build it, they will come, just like the old uh, baseball movie, right? So, uh, uh, so we'll do it. We'll figure it out. We start with expenses first, because expenses are normally easiest to identify. You may know that you're going to need to buy, you know, rent this building, and you got a, a quote for the rent. You can go to City of Reading Utilities, find out how much the average cost to heat and cool that place is. Uh, you know what Spectrum Internet costs. You're going to put that in with phones. Okay? How much your insurance is going to be. Uh, you're not going to have any employees. Don't have to worry about payroll to begin with. Good. You know, we go down the list, figure out the expenses, okay, before you make a dime. And that's what's called the break-even analysis okay break even analysis is if you got to sell 500 of these to break even each month you know as a business owner that at 501 yeah it's going into your pocket right so if you have a month where there's a thousand sales of this thing 500 of those sales are for you see so we'll do that We'll figure that out on the, on the expense size first and then try to calculate and crystal ball how many of those things you're going to sell. Okay? And like I say, I dig that. We do it here for free. Help you right through the process. Do you have the skills to pull it off? Okay? My thinking is the more outgoing you are, the more confident you are in what you're trying to sell. I don't care what it is. Okay? the better off you're going to be in being successful. No doubt about it, okay? A number one, do you like or do you trust your product and can you sell it to somebody even that may not need it or want it to begin with and you're going to convince them they do? Ah, that's the key. That's a home run, okay? So create a plan, of course, with the cost of goods. We talked about that, supply chains. Value and growth. Uh, growth is a killer. One of the problems that can happen, believe it or not, is you grow too fast. That's a toughie. My little salsa buddy, he had a situation where he was getting more and more stores wanting the product, and he was working 
24 seven. So I told him, man, you will kill yourself, dude. It's time to get somebody to help. So we went down to smart center, put that on your list of contacts for those of you who want employees, smart center. And I said, remember that smart center has people they pre-screened. They've helped with doing their resumes. Uh, and they have programs in many areas where they can let you hire a person and then pay you back for the first 90 days of their salary while you train them. How about that for a cool deal? So you can hire somebody, train them. If it doesn't work out, okay, get another one. Do the same thing till you find somebody that works. And they foot the bill, depending on what you're hiring? That's a win. Win, 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 right? So that's what he did. He went down there and said, I need somebody that's going to help package and and put it in the boxes and put it in the refrigerator. It's basically to help me with an assembly line process. Boom. It was covered under the 90 day program. He got the person in there. She worked out great. And uh, that's how he got his employee. First 90 days, no charge. That's pretty cool, man. Joe, there's a question. Yes. Do you need a seller's permit for every state you plan to sell your products in? If you're selling a product from uh, coordinating, from what I understand, again, this needs to be checked with your CPA and your tax person now, okay? But as best I know, uh, if you're selling it from your head office in California, that's where your product originates, then no, all you got to do is do California tax, okay? Even if you're buying it in uh, uh, New York. Somebody in New York wants to buy your product, but you're selling it, distributing it from the state of California. Guess what? California gets their sales tax out of it. All right. Now, if you have distribution centers and you're sending it out of different states, that's a tax question. It's above my pay grade. So it'd be better to check with an accountant or CPA. But that's the basics, okay? Who are your customers going to be? Are you going to sell wholesale to another business? Are you going to sell retail to me as the consumer? Big difference. Big difference. My salsa guy did both. Did both. He'd sell product to a store at a lesser price. They took on all the, the responsibility of selling the product, right? So he didn't have to do that. Uh, and he sold himself to people. Then he had to deliver it or he had to have them pick it up and he had to charge sales tax. So wholesale, retail. Uh, are people wanting your product right now? Again, when this gentleman grew, he grew so fast, he had to get an employee. Yeah, SAP, he was working all day, every day, man. The problem with the situation, the way he started and as he grew, he made the product, he boxed the product, he put it in his van, he delivered the product, and he put it in the stores himself. Okay? So that's everything from marketing, manufacturing, uh, uh, distribution, sales. <laughs> he was a one-man show, baby. So, you know, that'll get you after a while. I'll tell you that, especially when he was driving all over Northern California in his little van. So anyway, you're going to need a physical location or can you do it like a lot of us do out of our house? Again, I operate out of a cell phone and a computer. Pretty easy for me, but not everybody can do it. You need a physical location. Sadly to say, we're going to have a lot of physical locations available in the next five months, four months, six months, January. I'm thinking January 1, 2021. Because I'm afraid that unless something crazy happens in Washington, we're going to have a lot more empty storefronts. So people are going to be dying to get stuff rented again. So if you're thinking of doing it, you understand what it is, supply and demand like anything else. So you can offer things like, okay, I see you just had this emptied out and you probably have a payment on that thing of X amount of dollars. How about I go in, you give me the first three months for nothing while I set this up, because I'm not going to make anything, and you start charging me rent on the fourth month. Not unusual. Not unusual to do it that way. So you can make deals, right? We'll talk about that too. 
What's your territory? Definitely have an online presence. I would say probably well over 90% of, it might be closer to 100. Got to have some kind of presence. Even my little daughter in her little side business, she runs off Facebook. Okay. She got rid of her website. She thought it was useless, but she operates her entire business off Facebook. Okay. She has like 1,500 followers, all from the Shasta County area, and that keeps her busy. Okay. Well, she does these art classes at night. Okay. Until recently, when the bars closed, she had an issue because <laughs> she used to do it at Kelly's and, and all these places where, you know, you have 10 people come in, drink beer, and paint a painting that she's designed. And she helps you paint it, not paint by numbers, but close. So it's called Art by the Bottle. And she had a ton of people following until all these places had to shut down because of COVID. She's just getting ready now to reactivate. She'll probably start October 1 to start her classes again. But again, she, you know, she doesn't have a physical location. She operates out of her house on the Facebook page and PayPal. Okay, that's her credit card processing group is PayPal. Everybody prepays. She knows how many people are going to show up. She's already got the money in the bank before the class occurs. Pretty cool, huh? That's the other thing. Figure out how people are going to pay you and when. And who's going to process your credit cards? Because if you're selling anything, just about anything, you better have some kind of credit card acceptance program. Uh, a point of sale, they call it. Whether you use a cell phone with a little thing punched into the side of it, or, or, you know, you do an online PayPal presence, you can use a, uh, a PayPal app, you know, something, Square, Square is the other one, uh, one of the, the big ones. So know about your, your situation there. How are we doing, Linda? We do not have any questions right now. So if you do have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat. Fail to plan, you plan to fail. Turning the idea into a plan. And this is, again, one of the most important steps, especially if you're wanting to get money. So why do businesses fail? They don't have a business plan. They don't have enough money. They're not committed. Too much competition they didn't expect. Customer base was too small to buy. They don't budget. You don't have the skills. Uh, not able to say no, believe it or not. Very important thing to be able to say no. Yeah, you'd normally try to say yes, but that also be able to say no. And, of course, record keeping. So these are all, again, 7 out of 10 businesses normally still fail. On average, the first 18 months, and normally it's one of these or more than one of these that's creating that problem. So when you come in to visit us for the first time, uh, Emily will, will undoubtedly ask you, have you written up a plan? Well, most people probably have it up in their head, right? Well, just put it on paper, okay? One-page plan. What, what's the name of the business? Do you have a logo figured out? Uh, uh, what are you going to sell? What's your product? If you can figure out how much you're going to sell it for, because you've done some research and you're going to you either undercut the competition or you're going to have a better product than the competition as you may charge more, be nice to know how, if you've got that calculated. What's your market's going to be? Who are you going to sell to? Okay. Uh, and some basic numbers on expenses. Always good to know what your expenses at least minimal, minimally will be. If you're operating out of the bedroom of your house, pretty easy. Not a whole lot there, right? Unless you need to buy another computer. Pretty good shape. You could go ahead and use the one you got. I was just talking to Linda today. My 10-year-old computer finally went kaputski on me. I'm going to have to replace it here in the next pretty quick version my battery died and they got upset that the computer got upset that I didn't have a good battery I had some issues so you may need to get at least a computer and of course a lot of us can operate out of our little mini computers we carry around with us all the time the good old cell phones we talked about break-even analysis a little bit I can help you identify what that is again it's basically startup costs operating costs and how much of of these, whatever you're going to sell, is it going to take to pay that back each month? So that little black dot in the middle is the break even. Everything else above that you sell that month is yours. Pretty cool. That's what you want. You want a bigger to you than you have to them. 
And again, I mentioned to you about the Schedule C. This is something that came up very, very aggressively during the, the COVID and the idle disaster loans and the payroll protection loans. Sorry, it's not easily visible. I hope you have a 24-inch monitor. It's a little small, but you'll get a copy of this when you get the slide deck. Schedule C for sole proprietors are attached to your 1040 tax form. It's basically a breakdown of the profit and loss of your business in the tax year that you are completing. In this case, it was a 2019 Schedule C. Okay? So you have how much you made at the top, gross receipts line one, and then you start subtracting all the expenses out of it. You don't pay tax on the sales of your, of your business. You pay taxes on line 31, net profit, okay? So you pay your taxes to the IRS and the state, and you pay something called self-employment tax, which is technically your Social Security allotment, all right? And that's what you'll be paying at the end of the year. They're going to calculate things. They're going to say you get an X amount of dollars that needs to go to the IRS to cover a federal tax, state of California for the state tax, and federal also gets this self-employment tax number. For us, my wife and I, I would have been as a sole proprietor for, for, for 10 years. She was a real estate agent the last 20. So we had two of these, hers and mine, okay? And so say you have 100,000 in sales and your net is 25,000 on line 31, you write off everything else right? So how much are you going to pay in taxes on that 25 grand? You can calculate pretty safely it's going to be between four and five thousand bucks that you should have paid, okay? You can do quarterly payments if you want or you can pay them in April. You pay them in April and it's too much, you'll pay a small penalty. But suffice it to say, on a $25,000 profit, you're going to pay between four and five grand at the end of the year. Most of that four to five thousand is your self-employment tax because you're paying both halves. If you're employed by someone, you pay half, they pay half. So right now it's a 50-50 draw, okay? When you're self-employed, you pay the 100%. So it's double what you're paying now. So it's an interesting thing to remember to calculate. The rest of it, of the four grand, say 3,000 self-employment, the thousand would go to the IRS for the tax. Isn't that something? Also, this was used for sole proprietorships to borrow money on the disaster loan. This document alone, okay? That's how important this sucker is. Who knew? I didn't know, you know? So, Schedule C. How are we doing? We are doing fine. Joe, if we can pause for a moment and invite people to turn their microphones on if they have questions. Yeah, let's do that. It's nice when you can get a conversation back and forth and have a follow-up question for Joe if you have one. I do not see anyone turning on their microphone and we don't no have problem. any questions in the chat, so we are all right moving forward. Guess what? We're not the only people in town to assist you. How about that? There's a bunch of other acronyms, as you can see here on the screen, of agencies, groups, and, and so forth that can assist you with your business needs. SCAD, I already told you about, Bob Nash, wonderful guy. He's ex-banker, too, by the way, just like me. Isn't that funny? Excuse me, Joe. Yes. Dean does have a question. Dean, did you want to go ahead and ask your question? Um, I'm just making sure that my microphone is on, so I appreciate you guys, uh, including me, but no, I'm, I'm intently listening at the moment. Okay, so you don't have a question? Okay, thank you. I do not. Okay. I just make turn on my microphone. Intently listening. Oh, uh, no, no problem. <laughs> So again, Superior California Economic Development, Bob Nash's group, we talked about that. There's a company called SCORE, Service Corps of Retired Executives. 
They also can do more work than we can to assist in building a business plan if you really get stuck, all right? Women's Business Center, if you're a, 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 a we have a wonderful Women's Business Center here. So if you are a woman, want to become certified as a woman-owned business, uh, want to, to, to work with a great organization, it's called uh, WBC at Jedi. Tricia Funk runs that organization. It's over off of uh, Placer Street uh, by the new, uh, you may have seen the umbrella promenade down there that uh, was advertised in the city and by the chambers where the umbrellas are. She's in a little building over there. Uh, they're available. And most of these organizations are also paid for by our tax dollars. So you wonder how we stay alive. Boom. EDC, Economic Development Co Corporation, they're here as well. Uh, especially if you have a, uh, uh, a tech-based company. If you're, if you're tech-based, you're going to be doing something technologically involved. Uh, EDC can really help and assist as well. We all work together. So we'll tie in. PTAC, Procurement Technical, that's the group, our sister company from the coast, that'll help certify veterans. Because you become a certified veteran, uh, I'll give you an example of the veteran certified businesses I've helped in the last couple of years, fire truck veterans. Well, I'll tell you what, fire trucks, <laughs> yeah. Sadly enough, they're needed a bunch. So if Cal Fire or the state or the feds or the city anybody needs a water truck and you're a certified veteran or believe it or not, better yet, a certified disabled veteran, guess who gets the job call first? All right. So that's an important setup as well. Smart center we talked about and never discount our chambers of commerce. We have three in the greater Reading area. There's one in Anderson, one in Shasta Lake, one in Reading. Reading is the most active. They've been uh, uh, highly involved with all the grant programs locally, assisting existing businesses to try to get out of this COVID mess with grants. Uh, and Jake Mangus is a great guy, a great guy. He's running the place, and uh, he's got great people working under him. I've known him for years. And so never discount Chamber of Commerce, especially if you're selling product a lot locally, okay? So that's it, man. We covered a bunch, right? Uh, assess it, uh, team, legal structure, ideas, uh, business plans. Don't discount uh, uh, a website called bplans.com. I'll bring it up uh, here at the end. So bplans.com, bplans.com. It's a cool website because obviously they're going to sell you the opportunity to help you make your plan. That's how they make their money, right? So they'll say, you know, I'll help you with the plan, charge you a thousand bucks, whatever. But they have over 500 sample plans they've already helped other customers build in the site. It's the sample plan section on B plans. So if you're opening a retail store of any basic type, you can type that into the search under the sample, and you're going to be able to see five, six, seven sample business plans of companies that have already paid to have this done, and you'll see every single page of their plan. How about that, huh? You don't have to recreate the wheel from total scratch. They also have a blank template that's got all the headings on there for an official plan. This will be the next step after your one pager, right? If you need funding, especially, you're going to need a 10 to 15 page plan. Typical. Two of the pages are the forecasts, which I'll help you with step by step. Okay? So <clears throat> right now we're doing probably 2021 and 2022. So that's probably what we're working on now. We're getting so late in the year. So it's pretty cool to do a 21 and a 22 forecast model. Okay, so bplans.com. All right, so what do you do next? Obviously, sign up completely for our services at sbdcsc.org. It's free. We do not tell anybody what you're doing. We are highly confidential, as confidential as any bank or doctor's office ever been. 
We don't uh, divulge anything. They can't even go home and tell my wife what you're doing. And then you sign up for one-on-one -on -one consulting, either with me, Linda, whoever. Or you can mix and match us, right? You might want to do a Linda, a Joe, a Rebecca, a Lonnie. You can mix them. We'll all be ready to help you out, man. It's a great deal, okay? <clears throat> and here's, of course, some of the websites. Okay, there's our address. We're out. Currently, we're out on Airport Road, uh, 5800 Airport. We're actually in the uh, Frozen Gourmet Building. A lot of people go by and they say, where are you located? We're in the old Frozen Gourmet Building. It's the pretty property as you're headed out to the airport southbound on Airport Road. On the right-hand side, past the Shasta View light, okay? You have REU, Reading Utilities, across to the left, and you have this beautiful park-like setting with a bunch of grass and trees, and we have deer, we have a family of turkeys now that are out here with their babies. Uh, we're in that building, left-hand side, okay? We're technically subletting from the Builders Exchange, just to let you know why uh, why and where we're at. So you go into that area where the flags are, flagpoles are, turn left and park, come in the side door. You'll have already talked to Emily, set up an appointment, and uh, bingo if we're doing it in person. Otherwise, we're going to do it by phone or Zoom. It's not a problem, okay? There's uh, Emily's web, uh, email address, Emily at NorCal. I'm Joe at NorCal. Same, same exact, norcalspdc.org, okay? <clears throat> There's our website, spdcsc.org. If you're not in the Shasta, Trinity County area and listening to this, uh, uh, this broadcast, americasspdc.org, find an office in your area, okay? There'll be a me, a Linda, <clears throat> in each of the offices. There's a bunch of us, okay? That are, uh, that are doing this. Uh, all expertise, uh, experts in our little field, okay? Boom, there we are, everybody. Let's open it up to questions for another minute. Would anyone like to ask a question through your microphone or type a question in the chat? While we're waiting, if you don't mind, I'd like to chime in about something. Sure, David. That's all right. Um, Joe had a slide earlier on uh, resources uh, that are available for you for uh, at no cost to you. On October 13th, we're having a webinar that will introduce you to those resources and give you an opportunity to uh, ask any questions you might have um, uh, from them and, uh, and hear what it is they have to offer. Um, you can find out about it at the website, sbdcsc.org, and go to the calendar. It's on October 13th, and uh, I think you'll, uh, I think it could be very valuable for you, so. And hopefully all of you did hear, uh, some of you did come in a little late after possibly David's presentation. We are going to have a venture camp uh, coming up. You'll get a piece of uh, all the pertinent data on this as soon as you get the, the slide deck, but it's coming up. Uh, and it's a venture camp where you can actually pitch your, your product to uh, a group of us. We're, uh, David and I are both involved in, in this project for sure. Uh, EDC is involved, a bunch of uh, different people. Angel Investment Group will be involved. And uh, you can pitch your product and then get expert assistance in a four-week kind of condensed time frame to go after a potential uh, uh, ending grant prize. I think the, what is it, 2,500, David? Yeah, 2,500 bucks. Yeah, 2,500 bucks towards your business. Yeah, what a deal. It go up, but uh, right now it's at 2,500. Yeah. There you go. So it's a great program. It, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't do the big one this year because of COVID. Next year, we're going to hopefully do it in April, cross our fingers, uh, the big venture conference. But it's a good way to, to, to promote your product and see from a, from a group of people that may not know much about what you're doing a, a kind of a really good idea of the, the, the feasibility, if nothing else. Okay, and it's uh, free to apply. 
uh, uh, on the website. Let's see, I don't have it up. So of course that's kind of an issue. It's uh, startupreading.com slash camp. There it is. David saves the day. So again, you'll have it on the, on the slide deck, but hey, go to it now and apply. We are having several applications a day going in now to get a chance to do a one minute pitch. And this one minute pitch will be your quick presentation of what you want to sell, how you're going to sell it, and who, who you're going to sell it to in a 60 second time frame. It's really, really cool way to get you off the ground and then have a bunch of expert help to get you to a better pitch in that four week time span. Well, if there's no more questions, I wanna thank you all very much for joining us today. Linda, are we good? We are, I just wanna let everyone know that you're gonna receive an email in about three days or so from Emily. And in that email, she will have the slide deck that Joe just shared with you and also a link to this webinar recording. And what we would love for you to do is within that email, there's a survey please, please fill out that survey for us because we need to show our funders how we're spending their money. And we'd also love your feedback. We wanna find out what would you like to see us do? And we love feedback. If we can do something better, please let us know. And we certainly wanna know what your webinar requests are. Are there things you could really use some training in? We would be happy to create something to address that for you because you're probably not the only business with that need. Joe, would you like to wrap up for us? We're just about at the top of the hour. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for joining us tonight. I hope to see as many of you as possible eventually come in and sign up for one-on-one -on -one consulting with us. Love, I, I love new ideas. I, I, I love to talk to people about what they're excited about. Um, so that's it, man. That's your next step. Let's do this. And by the way... Joe helped me start my business about six years ago. So you're in good hands if you work with Joe. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate it. All right, everybody. Have a good evening. And again, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye from my island. <laughs>